welcome to the Managing the Smart Mind podcast with your host, Coach Kramer. This is episode 54, Reconsidering Your Decisions. When is it a good idea? And when are you just being flaky? Hey, smart human. Welcome to the topic of coming back on your decisions. And the reason this is top of mind for me is that we have just completely at the last minute changed our plans for spring break. We are due to go to Venice for five days. I had booked a beautiful apartment months ago and I was very excited to show my daughter this amazing city, see lots of art, enjoy some delicious seafood, you know, travel around on the Vaporetto. Just, yeah, it was going to be a wonderful experience. But as our departure date approached, I got more and more stressed out. I noticed that I was actually dreading the whole trip, which is weird because A, I love Venice, B, Spending hours in museums is my idea of a perfect time. C, we actually found a pretty, you know, sensory friendly place to stay. And D, as said, I'd really been looking forward to showing my now 16 year old the city um, actually for over four years since pre-COVID. And it wasn't actually until my husband asked, are you sure you want to go? Don't you actually want to cancel? That I realized I did. <laughs> <laughs> and even when he asked, I needed a lot of time to process this. First, the possibility of even cancelling, of changing my mind about a trip, and then coming to terms with redeciding, right? Reconsidering. My brain went, but, 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 etc., etc. <laughs> and of course, being a human with a human brain, I immediately started to feel bad. Bad because I started projecting the story that I was being difficult and ruining everybody's holiday. Now, I have the most amazing husband. And when I checked in with him, he said, listen, it's still mostly refundable. And I don't want you to go on a holiday you dread. It's not going to be fun for any of us. I will just go to Venice some other time. Very wise man, which left my daughter. So I asked her very carefully, hey, we're actually considering cancelling Venice. How do you feel about that? And then I saw this massive relief in her face. I mean, it's insane. It turns out she has a test week straight after and she had been stressed out about it without even realizing. So she admitted that she thought it would be pretty amazing to not go to Venice. I mean, wow. That was not what I expected. So this thing, which... I thought I had to force myself to go do and enjoy. It turned out to be optional. And my decision to not go helped someone else as well, right? Now, I'll tell you more about what we ended up doing instead at the end of the podcast. But first, let's talk about figuring out when it makes sense to change your mind. Because, hey, are you not just being flaky? And for those of you whose first or second language isn't English, this means something like being unreliable, change your mind all the time, right? All those things. Shouldn't you just stick to your guns, tough it out, move through discomfort and do it anyway? Well, yes, sometimes you should and sometimes you shouldn't. So how do you know which is which? Which, by the way, is actually an essential ingredient in, you know, building and keeping self-trust, trusting yourself and your decisions to be solid. But that's a different story. So here's how I actually do this. I run my decision past a list of questions. I get curious. And I suggest that you do the same. So for the rest of this podcast, I want you to think of something you want or wanted to change your mind about so you can experience how this process works in real time. Right. So if you need to pause the recording and think of something you want to reconsider. And then press play again. Got it? OK, here it goes. First of all, I want you to go back to the moment when you first made the decision. Did you make it for the right reasons? 
which is to say, is this something you really want? Or were you people pleasing, status satisfying, falling in line with cultural conditioning, you know, doing something for the wrong reasons, basically? Did you study law to please your parents? You may want to consider dropping out. So did you make your decisions for you? For the right reasons? If so, <laughs> move on to the next question. If not, you definitely want to reconsider. And if you did make it for the right reasons, here is another important check. Is your decision in alignment with your core values? Let's say you volunteered for a position that is taking way more time than you expected, and this clashes with your core value of prioritizing family time. Or you got hired for a job when, where you are actually asked to do things that you consider unethical, right? In those cases, you definitely want to reconsider. And if this hasn't cleared things up for you yet, here's the next question. Do you know why you want to change your mind about your decision? This is massively important, right? It could be that new information has come to light. It could be that circumstances have changed in a way that make you rethink the whole thing. As was the case for me with Venice, right? I was feeling overstimulated, right? Just very easily um, agitated, dysregulated, all the things. And that made me think about the whole trip in a different light. It could also be that you decided to do something like write a book <laughs> <laughs> which turns out to be much harder and uncomfortable and slower than you'd imagined. I'm not at all talking about my own experience here, of course. And the reason you want to change your mind is to get away from all that discomfort. That could also be a reason. So whatever it is, again, pause and think, why do I want to change my mind about this? Why do I want to reconsider my decision? And once you figure that out, then ask, do you like your reason or reasons? Now, humans with smart minds are especially good at creating new stories and arguments why we shouldn't finish project A, but need to start project B instead, right? We need to stop focusing on Instagram because we've just realized that LinkedIn is where it's at for our business and so on and so forth. And usually these stories are so good that we often convince ourselves and, and others easily that we need to revisit those decisions, right? And completely change our plans. But when we dig a little bit deeper into the motivation for changing our decision, it becomes easier to see whether it's quote unquote flaky or not. Are you wanting to change your decision to avoid uncomfortable emotions, including boredom, for example, or frustration? Then you probably don't want to change your mind and you want to try navigating those emotions instead. I have a whole series of podcasts on this with a workbook. I'll leave a note about it in the show notes. And a lot of smart people have created incredibly smart strategies to actually avoid all uncomfortable emotions. These include walking away from positions, plans, projects with what at surface level looks like amazingly good arguments. But when you dig a little deeper, you see that it's just a brain's coping strategy for avoiding emotional discomfort, which is never a great reason to come back on a decision. And it actually leads to a lot of frustration and dissatisfaction in the long term. Now, it could also be that you want to change your decision because of emotions like guilt, shame, extreme anxiety, and so on. And these are not emotions you necessarily want to process and sit with, right? As opposed to boredom, frustration, and so on. Instead, you want to find the thoughts that are causing them and change those. And again, I have a whole mini course on this. It's called the mini course on emotional agility. It's completely free. So if this is new to you, download it and learn how to do this. But again... Changing your decision because of emotions like guilt, shame, extreme anxiety is not a good reason to change your mind. 
Here's another question to help you sort things out. If success were eventually guaranteed, would you want to stick to your guns? And this is especially handy when it's like a longer term project, like writing a book or building a business. Because in situations like this, the answer is almost always yes, right? If my book's success were guaranteed, would I keep writing the book? Of course I would. <laughs> so if you were able to solve all the obstacles in your way, would you want to do this thing and stick to your decision? If the answer is yes, then you know what to do. You just need to keep at it and maybe use some tools and tricks to break it down into smaller blocks to you know, remove starting friction. Again, lots of podcast episodes on this. Uh, for example, how to get started and how to keep going, right? But if this is the reason, sorry, let me say, say that again. If success were guaranteed, you would do it, then you want to stick with it because you can just decide to stick with it until you succeed. Yes, you can. Now, another approach I love is a bit more holistic, and this is dropping down into my body and then kind of picturing both outcomes, right? The first decision and then the outcome, the thing that would happen if I change my decision. Sort of painting both the pictures and then just checking in to see how they make me feel like physically. So for my holiday example, I'll picture myself in Venice just wandering around and checks in how that felt as well as the alternative plan, which I'll tell you about in a second. And the latter felt so much more calm and spacious and inviting that my body immediately gives the answer, right? It's, it's, it's even faster and in some ways more trustworthy than my brain. Now, sometimes there are decisions you made a while, sometimes even years ago, and it's very hard to wrap your head around like, should I stay in this position, for example, or should I stay with this partner? And then you can ask, would you still choose this experience or thing or person in your life today, being the person you are today, knowing the things you know today, would you make the same decision? And that can also be incredibly helpful. Now, there's one final part we need to address here, because Let's be honest, a lot of our decisions impact other people, right? We don't live in isolation. And we've already talked about guilt not being a useful emotion to work from. But how do we then take into account other people's needs and desires in a constructive manner, right? That honors all of us. And this is where you want to communicate rather than solve the problem in your own head, as I'm prone to do. So lots of us think we know what other people are thinking, and we are so wrong. I mean, sometimes we do, but often we don't. I thought my daughter would be gutted if I cancelled Venice, and it wasn't until I asked her that I learned that she was actually massively relieved. So the rule here is never assume, just ask. Ask the person, how do you think it will impact you if I change my mind? And listen, if they think it will impact them negatively, you then have to check in with yourself and your values and priorities and then consciously decide what you want to do, which may not necessarily be what they want or prefer, but it totally could. But at least you're making a well-informed decision. And I think the final part to this whole process of reconsidering decisions is whenever you decide to redecide, <laughs> do not second guess yourself. Right. Decide that whatever choice you made was the best choice ever. And if you're confused on how this works, check out the episodes on decision making. So going back to our story, our holiday, we decided to see whether we could still get a holiday home somewhere in the Netherlands instead of going to Venice. And lo and behold, an amazing villa we stayed in last summer with a stunning view of you know a lake was still available and actually massively discounted. So instead of staying in beautiful Italy, we are headed for the bleak north of Holland with a big box of crime novels and other books and delicious food because there's a massive kitchen there too. And we're totally stoked about it. We're so happy. 
Looking forward to lots of sleep, naps, walks, reading, and some writing. And there's actually a tale by the Brothers Grimm about never making yourself wrong, whatever you have decided, which, by the way, drove me mad as a child. I could not get this fairy tale. It's about happy Hans, who gets a clump of gold, right, after he leaves his master after years of service, then meets someone on the road on a horse and thinks, oh, this is nice. I'd like a horse. So he exchanges the gold for a horse. Then the horse sort of bucks him. I don't know what it's called. Throws him off. He's like, okay, maybe horses are not such a good idea. Exchanges it for a cow and so on and so forth. He keeps exchanging it until he actually ends up with nothing, (laughs) nothing at all, which then delights him. He's so happy. He has no load to carry, right? So if you want to change your mind about something, whether big or small, you want to rethink your decision, you now know which questions to ask to figure out whether you're being smart or being flaky. But whatever you decide, make sure to be like happy hearts and have your own back always. Have a fabulous non-flaky week. Bye-bye.